This is the 2022 718 Cayman GT4 RS. As you know, this is the first example of an RS model on the Cayman. First time we've done something like that, a really special car. As you know, again, it uses the same engine as the 992 GT3, so something that takes things up a notch and gives an even sharper level of track focus to the Cayman model line. This video is brought to you by SunTech Paint Protection Film. Protect your Porsche with SunTech Reaction, combining the benefits of paint protection film and ceramic coatings. Yeah, that's a question a lot of people are asking. And honestly, the demand has been there for a long time. We've been thinking about ways to do it, but the catch was always that the dry sump lubrication system in the previous version of the engine that we were using in the prior generation GT3 wouldn't fit in the engine compartment for the 718. So when we were redesigning it in thinking about the 992 GT3, we took an opportunity to redesign the dry sump system in a way that would fit into both cars. It isn't the same transmission that we use in the PDK equipped GT4, which we only recently began offering as well, as you know, because historically the GT4 has been a manual transmission only car. But when you're talking about an RS, you're talking about fastest lap times, you're talking about track focus. And in the case of this car, you're also talking about a transmission that comes over from the GT3. So even more GT3 technology that's being passed over to the 718 model line with shorter gearing, something that's really well suited, both for driving on canyon roads and also for turning lap times. Well, so there are a few things. Um, the engine itself is the same, and people talk about uh, the horsepower difference a little bit, and they're curious, why is it that there's less power? Well, it's only a little bit, and it's not that we've played at all with the engine, it's still the same package. Same rigid valve train, six individual throttle bodies, same package overall. The reason that there's a little bit less power is that there's a greater distance in the exhaust system with the mid-engine placement by comparison to the rear engine of the 911. And because of that, it creates a little bit of additional back pressure, and that's where you get the drop in power, but it's only slight. So there were a few things, a few limitations that we had in terms of what we were able to do, especially keeping costs in mind with the uh, system that we use on the 992 GT3, you have PTV Plus, it's electronically controlled and it's possible to have fully variable torque distribution from left to right, whereas with the mechanically locking differential that we use on this car, there's a limit to the amount of torque that can be distributed from left to right, either under acceleration or overrun. Yeah, you know, I had the same question, so it's a reasonable one. A lot of people are asking that, but you gotta remember that it's a 23 second improvement by comparison to the other car. The lap time we set, the car was going flat out. And you can't just think about engine when you're thinking about lap times. It's a matter of downforce, it's a matter of chassis, it's a matter of a lot of things. So, you know, the front axle on the, uh, the 992 GT3 plays a huge role in terms of camber stability. There's a lot of technology at play there. Rear axle steering, another one, having a bigger footprint and just having a larger amount of contact patch to work with. There are a lot of factors that go into creating a lap time. Um, and a 704 is absolutely nothing to, uh, to you know, thumb your nose at. So, you know, we drove uh, with nothing left on the table when we were setting the lap time for this car. And the result is a 23 second improvement in lap times. So it really kind of speaks for itself. It's just a regulatory thing. It's a difference in terms of the way that the curb weights are determined in the US versus in Europe. It's the same car though, there aren't any differences between them. Of course, you know, little things like, um, you know, having the availability of stereo delete is, you know, one thing that is different if you're talking about uh, simple differences between what's available in one market versus the other, but in terms of what you're getting, it's the same car. I, you know, I, to be honest, I haven't had a chance to drive it for myself, but talking to the people who have, talking to the people who developed it. Come around here, I'll show you. The biggest thing, of course, is the bespoke intake that this car has, feeding air directly into an air box that's visible in the rear compartment. Now, in the development process for this car, that was an area of huge focus because there's so much air when the engine's under load being fed in that initially uh, we noticed that it was creating a lot of resonance in the cabin. And you know, that can be a good thing but it was vibrating. 
So we had to engineer the air box to be really stiff. The net result is that there's a lot of intake noise, a lot of mechanical noise. It's really loud. You know, this is a car that when you get into it and you start the engine, you hear that very characteristic flat six, but it really isn't until you put the engine under load, until you drive it in anger, that you really get a, a, a better perspective for how emotional it is to drive. You know, just burbling sounds and the intake noise and everything that you really want to hear with that engine is very, very easy to hear from inside the cabin. Woo! <laughs>